This week marks the anniversary of an event that brought new hope to a deeply troubled land. 25 years ago this week, the Good Friday Peace Accords were signed in Northern Ireland. Those agreements might never have happened without the involvement of former U.S. Senator George Mitchell of Maine. He was appointed U.S. Special Envoy to Northern Ireland by then President Bill Clinton. 207's Don Kerrigan talked with Senator Mitchell a few days ago about that achievement, which he says almost didn't happen. In 1997, parts of Northern Ireland still looked like a battlefield with British soldiers and heavily armed police guarding the streets. And after trying for close to two years to find a peace agreement, Senator George Mitchell remembers being worried. A lot of insults, a lot of back and forth. Uh, and then uh, it kind of hit rock bottom uh, around Christmas of 1997. That meant we'd been in talks for more than a year and a half. And uh, there was a violent episode. Uh, and there was an escalating series of retaliatory killings. So the killings and bombings, which had been largely reduced under the ceasefires during the negotiations, flared up and it looked like uh, the whole process was coming to an end. Senator Mitchell was ultimately able to save those talks, but it wasn't easy. And earlier that same year, he had given New Center Maine's Pat Callahan a street tour of Belfast and the complex obstacles to peace. 60% of the people consider themselves British and 40% of the people consider themselves Irish, and that's the nub of the problem. Uh, you have here a clash of nationalities, a clash of religion, a clash of cultures, and unfortunately, all of that combined has produced a clash of violence. He recalled those days when we talked, 25 years after the historic Good Friday Agreement. At that time, all sides hoped it would end decades of violence, killings, and bombings. It was a very difficult and dangerous place. In the 25 years or so before the peace agreement, uh, in political violence in Northern Ireland, 3,500 people were killed and 50,000 were seriously injured, many of them brutally and totally impaired for life. Ending that violence, he says, meant understanding anger and resentment that dated back hundreds of years, as well as the modern parts of the conflict. This is both a religious, a political, and to some extent a geographic and economic conflict. That's extended over a very long period of time. And it required working with and listening to more than half a dozen different factions to hunt for common ground. For most of the two years, there was very little progress. Uh, uh, these political leaders had lived their entire lives in conflict. They didn't listen to one another. Mitchell says when the talks appeared to be headed nowhere, he decided to call for a final deadline, reach agreement or go home. And when they all agreed to the deadline, I knew that they were serious, that despite their many difficulties, despite the hostility, the violence, the intensity, they didn't want to go back to the violence. And during that time, Senator Mitchell faced his own hard decision. His son was born in the U.S. The senator went home to be there and called his office in Northern Ireland. I asked my assistant there to find out how many children were born in Northern Ireland that day, and they came back very quickly with the figure. 61 children were born in Northern Ireland on the same day that my son Andrew was born. And so I, when I told my wife that uh, I was thinking about going, leaving because as every parent knows, when you have a child, your responsibilities change irreversibly. Uh, she said, no, you go back. She said, I'll take good care of Andrew. You worry about those 61 kids. So I went back and a few months later, we were able to get an agreement. It was April 10th, 1998 that the Good Friday Peace Accords were signed, an agreement that Mitchell says changed the lives of people in Northern Ireland. In the 25 years since the agreement, there have been a total of 155 deaths. Still too many, of course, but a far cry from the 3,500 dead and 50,000 wounded of the 25 years before the agreement. So it's a long, hard struggle, and differences remain. There's still 
segregation, there's still hostility, there are still many, many differences and disagreements, but they made it fundamental decision to resolve their differences through democratic and peaceful means, not through political violence, and that's the central result and the central issue of the agreement which I helped negotiate. And a quarter century after Pat Callahan walked those same streets, he says George Mitchell was key to bringing peace. Personally, I think it's probably the most important thing he did on a worldwide scale because it changed a country and changed the lives of thousands and thousands of people. And in that, Mitchell told me, is a lesson for the world. The people of Northern Ireland were able to reach an agreement to decide their disagreements through democratic and peaceful means. And if they could do it there, anybody can do it in their own country. And it should also judge the peace negotiator, the senator, just as well. Senator Mitchell told, the, told us he is hoping to be in Northern Ireland next Monday to give the opening speech at the ceremony marking the 25th anniversary. And Bill Clinton is traveling to Ireland. President Biden is traveling to Ireland. So this is a milestone, a true milestone, because this peace has, for the most part, endured and changed life in Northern Ireland and Ireland. And George Mitchell will be marking a personal milestone too. Later this year, he'll turn 90.